Hello, everybody. Tammy, say hi. Hey. Why are you off camera? Because I'm having makeup on. You still look pretty. Yeah. You look better than me. Okay, people would rather look at you than me, but they'll have to live with just the fact they can just hear your voice. Uh, Susan, are we talking about, uh, I think we're talking about inbreeding here. Susan Sproxmith, who, who, who produced lots of good comments for us. We appreciate her feedback. Uh, she was in a show war for quite some time with a different breed and inbreeding and line breeding was encouraged. I do not, however, well, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Look, I mean, I've got another question here about that. So we'll just kind of face this right now. What does the AKC say about this? Not a thing. You can breed a sister to a brother, and AK is not going to stop you from registering the litter. They don't have, as you might say, a dog in the hunt. Would you breed a brother to a sister only if you're crazy? Because you really are asking for a lot of problems. And the reason is, it's all to do with double recessive genes. Normally, when you breed a dog to another dog, there is a really bad few recessive genes that you don't want to pair up but the chance of matching up with an unrelated dog is very slight. So that's why we don't see very many problems. Same thing with human beings. But when you start to breed offspring directly back to their parents, nephews to aunts, these kind of things, then you definitely don't have much genetic diversity and you do run the risk of having some really bad issues. And, and I've talked about this before, if you look at the, the Habsburg line of uh, Royal Dynasty, they did exactly that to preserve their dynastic rights and they ended up losing the whole thing because the last person was an absolute absolute DNA disaster so unless you've got a really good reason to do it I wouldn't do it um, Jade Rod 23 I've been thinking about research oh okay thinking and researching for a long time about breeding Frenches I want to thank you for sharing us with all of your knowledge and I, you know what I'd say to you go get yourself a Frenchie you will not be disappointed what do we think of French Tammy? Love them. Been doing it for 18 years. They're the best. Yes, I love they these are. little dogs. I like. I mean, do you like all dogs? Yeah, I like all dogs. Which dogs do? You, which dogs do you not like the, the least? Oh, well, I don't Let's want to say that. Okay, because you're gonna upset somebody. All, all dogs are beautiful. The only dogs I'm wary about. Except are, for the hairless ones. That's my. That's my uh, opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, they don't look so good, do they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, my thoughts on this is I like all dogs. I'm a little wary of dogs that I've known to be uh, dangerous dogs. I mean, that would be, you know. No, no please don't. But Tammy says not so. Okay, where we go. All right. Yeah, uh, just, your opinion to yourself. Jitka Metova, my seven-week pregnant French bulldog has diarrhea for three days. This is normal. I gave her plain chicken, but nothing else. Um, well, I would do this. So she's seven weeks. So she's 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 getting close to the point she needs to. Uh, she's going to well. I'd start worming her. Give a safeguard for three days in a row. No. Nope. She's ten, 10 days before pregnancy. Well, she's about there. Three she's days. seven weeks. So okay. she's, a, she's a week before pregnancy. Oh, okay. Well, so give, give a safeguard for three days straight. Um, it's a, if you use safeguard, fentapendazol, it is, I don't normally give dosages out, but it is a one cc or one mil for every five pounds of weight. So a 20 pound dog would get four cc's. Do it for three days. Three days in a row. Completely safe and you should do it anyway. Um, and that might help diarrhea. The other thing you can do is you can give us some canned pumpkin and see if that'll help sol sol solidify things up. And the if you're other still thing too, make sure you're not having any seasoning on your chicken. Make sure it's just plain. Yeah, watch out for salt and those kind of things, yeah. right? No seasoning on it. If you get rid of the skin and you just give them straight um, breast meat and you know cooked, then I mean you're fine. Yeah, if, it, if, this, if the diarrhea continues, you're going to have puppies soon, but I mean, you can always go have a fecal swab done and find out if there's something else going on. But I'd start with a safeguard first. Uh, Sari Pancha, hey James and Tammy, thank you for the encouragement information. You guys are great. My question is about microchips. Do you guys do it yourself? Yes, we do. The Google machine says it's illegal to do it at home. No. I don't know where you're coming up with that. Um, when you when you sell a dog as a pet, is there a way to make sure the new owner is not bringing them? What are some steps you can take to make sure they abide by the contract? Okay, so we'll go. We'll spend a bit of time on this. So the first thing is is um, absolutely you can. And we sell these. You can go buy a microchip that you can do yourself. It comes in a syringe. It's already in a sealed package. It's already sterilized. 
you'll literally just clean off an area in the back of their uh, between their shoulder blades with some uh, alcohol and just stick it in there press the plunger and the little rice sized chip ends up under the skin um, cheap easy thing to do should you do this well I mean when is it valuable to have a chip done so the problem with this is people are under the impression that if they chip their dog and their dog gets stolen, they're going to find their dog. That is not the case. What a chip will do is it will identify that dog in the event that somebody takes a chip reader and swap and, and wands the back of their neck, it'll come back and give them a big long number and then you've got that big long number in your records, you know it's your dog and you can prove it. If a dog steals your dog and nobody ever scans it, it's not going to do you any good. However. I think it's not a bad idea to chip dogs. There's no, well, there's nothing. I think the name comes up on the computer of who the dog belongs no, to. No, it doesn't. Oh, it does. Oh, there okay. are registrable areas where you can do that. So there are databases where you can register that. But but the problem with this is is that you, the likelihood of you finding your dog after you've microchipped and it's gone missing mm. is pretty slim. The chances that you come across your dog and somebody says that's not your dog and you say it is that's when you a microchip is something that's beneficial because at that point you can say well we're going to go and we're going to go get this sorted out because i said it's my dog and if the microchip is your microchip number guess what it's your dog no argument about it well you may have to take them to court they may run off with your dog um so yeah um tammy's waving at people who has let us in who are nice yeah. nice yeah. drivers right yeah we like nice drivers yes. so all right so the next part about the google says that uh, you know google is great i love google but there is you know google it a number of different ways because that is misinformation there is absolutely nothing illegal about you doing this and if i'm wrong i'll eat my freaking hat on a video so just somebody go show me the information and get rid of me to eat a hat okay so that's that one where are my glasses i gotta read the next one okay oh okay the last part was is there any way to make sure the new owner is not breeding them well, yeah, the, 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 the only line of defense that you have is don't give them full breeding rights on the dog. Because if you do that, they cannot get AKC registration without cheating. And the problem is, if they're gonna cheat, the only thing you, recourse you have is to take them to court with a contract in hand. And that is not gonna be worth the fight, especially if they're out of state. I think you're not they gonna- call that hanging papers. Yeah, hanging, pa yeah, yeah. hanging papers. I don't know how you do it, but supposedly you can- yeah, I don't wanna know either. <laughs> I don't want any part of anything that's illegal. That. Yeah, I don't want to think anything. I want, don't want to encourage anything that's illegal with the AKC because the AKC generally are there to uh, watch out for us and to produce, uh, you know, a line of uh, dogs that are purebred. So some people don't like the AKC, but I, I generally do like the AKC. I think they do a pretty good job. I don't have any beef with them at all, and uh, I participate in their program with all of our dogs, right? Yeah. And they come and visit us every yes, now and then, they and they're always really always nice people. So super nice. Yeah. And they make great recommendations. They'll always find something. They say, "Well, you could be doing this." We never get written up on anything. They're always happy with what we're doing. And so, uh, overall, um, the AKC um, are great. But but back to this: what can you do? The answer is not much. Sure, what that question is. All right, so that's the, that's it for this one. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for Bye. Watching the, the video, uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here: I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Mm -hmm.